In order to keep bringing you guys tons of free content, we work with brand partners who you'll hear from in this episode, including an advertisement from Zopa Bank. Welcome back to the Talk 20s podcast. You may know today's guests from hit shows such as Love Island, Strictly Come Dancing, I'm a Celebrity and Hollyoaks. I'm of course talking about AJ and Curtis Pritchard. Before we dive into hearing all about this brother duo, including behind the scenes gossip you've not heard before, a quick reminder to hit that subscribe or follow button. Let's get on with the show. Curtis, AJ, welcome to Talk 20's podcast. No, hello, thank you very hello. much. I'm excited to be here. I love the studio. It's brilliant. Actually, it's pretty cool there, I've got to say. I'm so excited to have you guys here. We always kick start the podcast by getting you to look back through your phones and tell us what you were doing 365 days ago. And I want to see stuff that you've not posted on social media. So get okay. your phones out, please. All of a sudden, my heart has started beating very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm not going to see what you post. What, what? Have you told each other what you're going to show? No, no. no not okay, really. even better. I, even better. I, I don't know if I have or haven't posted this photo if it's Kurz he hasn't posted because Kurz doesn't post anything um, <laughs> I'm quite bad on social media I don't gonna lie but I'm gonna show you mine but this is a year ago actually okay. today to the day to the well two days off I'll okay. say, but yeah um, are you ready yes you ready for this no am I Oh my god, you're running a race. Yes. See, but look at the look at the stature. What is your phone doing in your pocket? Can I just say? <laughs> That's not my phone. <laughs> 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 no, that is my phone. Guys, it's definitely, it's phone. definitely my phone. Um, um, can I, need can I genuinely have a look? <laughs> I needed to check need my, um, my steps and stuff. So, um, but it does weirdly look like not, <laughs> not in the right place. We'll put it on screen, guys, for everyone, so you can see what I mean about the phone. But you do look very sweaty. Yes, that is that the end of a half marathon. So I mean, uh-huh. the finish line is about two meters in front of me. I'm wow. doing my last little sprint, my last little push just towards the end of it. And, and was uh, that your first half marathon? No, that was my third half okay. marathon. Okay, so you're like a well-seasoned runner then? Um, no. We will say yes, even though I only did it in two hours 17, which isn't that good. Kurt, I don't know if that's a good time or not. No, Kurt no, prepares so not. well for something that he injures himself before he even starts the race. <laughs> Shut up, AJ. So yeah. Kurt realised that he's very injured the day before and then thought, let's You've still try and run injured. it. injured. So, right, so I really prepared. I trained fully for it. Like, okay. um, this I, is the I was, thing. Yeah, I was doing like 13 miles constantly, was ready to set a nice time. Okay. And then in the last week, you're meant to chill out before doing the run. Like, right, take it a bit easy, you know, just, just drop down your training slightly. Mm-hmm. So I did. And then I went on a run three days before the half marathon, slow run. I did three miles and my hips seized up. Not even, I don't know why. Yeah. Actually, I do know why. I just moved into my place and I was sleeping on an airbed and the airbed was awful. So my hips were all out of line. My body was out of line. (laughs) Went on a run, hips seized up and three miles in. And then I realized, oh God, this isn't good. Like I was struggling to walk. Yeah. And I was doing it for charity, the half marathon. I had all of these things on there and I didn't want to not do it because I was going to let like the mind charity down, all these other things. We got money going on it and stuff. So I had to do it, forced myself to do it. And I'm still injured from it actually, to be fair. Oh my God, still injured yeah like I've just done the half marathon again the Wait, weekend well, just gone well, rewind rewind <laughs> you, you're injured now because you didn't train for this run and decide to do the same run now maybe possibly AJ okay it's a recurring injury we'll say okay. yes yeah and where was this uh London London landmark halves so oh, yeah because that's like quite a big like I can't what's that monument that's in the background you're asking the wrong guy okay, yeah sorry <laughs> I don't know where was the finish line it was just running towards kind of Trafalgar AJ, yeah. square <laughs> okay I feel like I know the back oh, I, of that horse's, horse's butt, basically. I feel like that, that, that's, I agree that's with not you. just towards, I think that, no, that it says that towards the end because I was sprinting there. I think you, a, saw, you saw a camera and thought, I'm going to make it look like I'm running really quick. <laughs> but honestly, it took me two and a half hours. And if I was running at that pace, I'd have done it one hour and 30 minutes. You know what though? That's so true. If I see a camera and if I, if I slow like, down, yeah. I will full on yeah. speed up for the <laughs> to camera. To make it look like you're looking. Yeah. Even though they're not even filming, they're probably just taking a snapshot. No, it doesn't really matter. They're probably not even taking a snapshot of me either. To be fair, <laughs> that's amazing. What's about what you, AJ? I've actually got the photo pre-run when Curtis is looking really happy and really good, and we're actually getting. Oh, we've got text coming through. Oh, this is pre-run. This is excitement. Blind, of, oh, oh she's blind. Yeah. Yes, this is myself, my girlfriend, and our cousin, and we are really confident, ready to run the race. And me. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and Kurt. yeah. Kurt's well, we can it see it's you, Curtis. <laughs> yeah. And um, Kurt's there, really confident right now because this run was. To be honest, we always do it every single year, and it's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing, memory. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. for mine charity, and it's one of the kind of things that we always just we just love to do it, even though it's it's so much pain. And once I've done. 
this amount of running, I don't run for the rest of the year. I'm done. This and is who's my running faster out of you two? Oh, AJ. Mm. I will say. <laughs> right, AJ has always been a faster runner than me. I was trying to find another little picture it's then to exactly see if I had something it's a bit of a marathon that bit. I haven't posted or anything that I thought could be quite cool. No, we won't post that picture. I look what? absolutely awful. What is that? Oh, oh, Curtis, yeah. show me that straight <laughs> no, away. No, no, what no, is no. the picture? No, nothing. What nothing. is it? Oh. I have to have clothes on on this podcast, you see. Oh, Christ. No, I don't want to see that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so you lads then, like, what were you two like growing up? Because now we know you for both being in the public eye, but like before you guys obviously like blew up and got got famous and stuff what was it actually like growing up as brothers adrenaline junkies i'd okay. say that's what we were when we were kids our dad was an ex-world champion dancer so that's where our dancing came from ah, in, in our okay. in our history of stuff but before that he didn't want us to dance so he was like go do extreme sports do some go-karting quad biking motorbiking do mountain biking want, just really? don't yeah dance. so that was our child and we were very competitive against each other but we you, always did are you still together. adrenaline junkies though because you've just yeah. told me that your girlfriend's bought you a bungee jump and you're not too happy about yeah. it <laughs> I just don't like free falling. Okay. No, you've got scared of heights the older you've got, I've noticed. That's the thing. Yeah, I, I, heights are not my forte. They're not my friend, I feel like. Anything else, adrenaline going fast, really pushing mm. yourself to roller the coasters. extreme. I love roller coasters. I roller coasters so fun. fun. Yeah, so you're fun. strapped in. You're pretty yeah. solid. You're not exactly free yeah. falling like, Although I do think oh, I'm okay, going to die there. every time I go on, but I kind of like... Autumn you know. Towers or Thought Park. Or Autumn Towers. Autumn Towers all day. Yeah. All day. Yes. All day. Yes. Yeah. But no, we've we've always had the opportunity to do what we want, and I yeah. think for us, we've kind of this is who we are. And I think there's the the irony of what you kind of said before we started the podcast was, oh well, you, we've just had a coffee, we've been speaking to each other for an hour. Yeah. Like, is this you? Is this, or are you going to suddenly switch and become someone yeah, else? Because we on have camera? had guests on the Talk Twenties podcast before that genuinely changed their whole personality as soon as the camera switched on. So we'll go, we'll grab a coffee beforehand, we'll just like chat, like make sure everyone's here on time and chill and everything. And then the cameras get switched on and we just joke like... It's if some... I could keep an accent up, I would have so tried to have done it. <laughs> but literally I just done can't. a whole podcast yeah. in Irish. Like, this is me. Like, But people do literally have an on-screen yeah, persona. And I think the yeah. priority for us has always just been, we are who we are. Mm -hmm. We've always kind of been grounded people and we appreciate everything. We're kind of born in Stoke-on-Trent. We kind mm -hmm. of moved to the kind of Stoke-on-Trent, slightly the nicer part towards the other side of the M6. But at the end of the day, for us, it's always about what we do giving out we just want to be happy kind people like mm -hmm. we appreciate life Give we appreciate 100%. every single opportunity we, we, we've gotten even to like if we say yes to a job whether it be a paid job or a free job or for charity we give it a thousand percent because that's mm. the way we've always been brought up mm. and that's kind of they're our mm. values and that's kind of how we approach life I remember my mum always saying I used to work at kennels actually and we used to work uh, walk about 100 dogs 200 dogs oh my a day God, sometimes that would be my dream oh, dogs are my favourite yeah, animals yeah. loved it it was yeah. amazing and mum came to do it one day with me because somebody else couldn't work and she was walking these dogs so fast we got all of the dogs done then she went on to clean and then she went on to somewhere else and I was like Mom, what's what, what's going on? She goes, if you're going to do a job, Curtis, do it and continue doing it because there's always something that can be done. Find it, keep working, keep pushing forwards. Mm -hmm. That always stuck with me, that did, mm -hmm. for some reason, just forever. Because you guys do a lot. Like, there's loads that you have done. <laughs> like, AJ, I was looking at your list of shows that you've been on on TV and it was ridiculous. Like, reeling some of them off. Like, obviously, we've done you've done Strictly. You've done I'm a Celeb. You've done Hunted Stand Up for Cancer. Hunted yeah. Stand Up for Cancer. You've done RuPaul's Drag Race, been a choreo on that. Yeah, choreographed the final, didn't we? Yeah. Choreographed yeah. the yeah. final. On that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, celebrity SAS. Yeah. yeah, love that one. That was a good one to be Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, that was fun as well. Yeah. I remember watching That's you mental. in... It was a live semi-final. Did I watch on that one? Yeah, you watched that one, live semi-final. Yeah. How old were you then? I was 18 then. 18. And that was your... Was that your first thing that you did? Um, Wait, were you 18? Britain's Got Talent was a really weird scenario. Yeah, I was I 18. I you were a bit younger, to be fair. I think I was 18 for that. Because it was yeah. kind of like, okay, we're dancing, we're traveling the world, competing, mm -hmm. we're at the best for our age at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, I want to go on TV. And I was thinking about it, like, what, what could we do? And I was like, okay, Britain's Got Talent, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Get a phone call the <laughs> next day. Would you like to go to Manchester and perform in front of Simon on Saturday? And I was like, this is so weird. I was like, Yes. I was like, we haven't but got a routine, haven't got anything. We're like, we'll we'll create something. What? You said and it was literally nice the day before, guy, but you'd you? literally have that thought the day before you got the call. And we even <clears> had <throat> the conversation out loud. Family oh sat down God. in the living room, and it was like, you know, when things. You just sure that wasn't your mum just like together. testing the water? Like, does he even want to do TV? We <laughs> maybe need to ask him before he gets that call. Yeah. Like, okay, it's safe to call. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> call now. <laughs> it's it's a really weird one when it comes down to TV side. Because I always said I'll never do TV. I'm always going to be a true competitor, travel the world, mm. dance, compete. 
teach and earn my living that way? And then can the small opportunities like Britain's Got Talent allow you to kind of dip your toe in it and kind of see like, this is the opportunity. This is kind of like the cameras, the lights, you kind of, you know that it's there. But at the end of the day, the one thing that's always been important to us is that we have a profession that backs us up. So Mm -hmm. wherever we go all over the world, like beyond language barrier, we can teach dance. Like you're learning to dance right I'm now. To like dance, everyone. it's great. And it's yeah. so easy to kind of really adapt to move mm-hmm. forward. But yeah, Britain's Got Talent was the first one and I I absolutely loved it. Minus I did actually think I tore my cartilage in the semi-final. If you watch the video back, Oof. my knee kind of snaps like in and Ouch. out of place um, because this gorgeous singer before had dry ice on the on oh, my plastic this floor situation. and I thought holy shit this is going to be very slippy did the dance you can see yeah. me sliding all over Who the place um, Chloe Hewitt at the time okay. and well, my in rehearsals, just they didn't have the dry out. ice did they well they did for the girl but live on the night like oh, we always faster, prepared for everything. Wasn't it? it wasn't that. I was supposed to be first. Then they said, oh, can you go second? Can you go third? Can you go fourth? It got to the point that I was then close the yeah. show yeah. live uh-huh. on the night. But you have to prepare for these things. Like yeah. nothing's ever as it seems. Did a good performance though. I don't remember any of it because um, Chloe elbowed me in the head yeah. in the rehearsal. <laughs> I had a right, if you could see on the oh makeup covering up. I don't remember any of that day. Yeah. Nothing. I have it's to watch it back on YouTube out. to remember it. <laughs> And 10 years later, he's rocking in the corner of his room. <laughs> I did like ballet and tap and jazz, but I I don't really understand like the ballroom dancing world. I only know it now because I'm obviously learning as an adult. But like explain to me about competitions and how that so works. The quickest way to explain it is within ballroom and then Latin, the two different kind of professions in yeah. their aspect, you'd have five dancers in ballroom and five dancers in Latin. Okay. So then you would go to a competition at the weekend and say there's like a 20 couples or 100 couples. It would get 100 knocked down to towards like 80 then to 48 then to and 12 and then to 6 and they just pick you off the floor going Lit- not it, you, you have, have a like- number on your back yeah. okay. so you're on there with your partner you have about 12 to 18 people on the floor at once and yeah. then they'll go around you do your rounds you 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 but you it, but it's surely that, that is it, it's uh, knockout straight away and so then you get brutal. to the final and then in yeah. the final you get marked first to six so First okay. to win, six to be so, last. So sometimes, actually, in them in them earlier heats and rounds, it wouldn't always be the best dancers. Actually, it's just who gets spotted first. Sometimes you until be you smart, become later, yeah. later on, and then they really so look at the, the tactics. Because obviously, you guys must have been good at it to get on strictly. Like, <laughs> well, how do you do it well? There's you, a lot of politics. <laughs> there, there is a lot of politics, but at the end of the day, you need to make sure you're always like within a large room, dancing in the center of the floor. Simple things, making sure your choreography mm. allows you to transfer around the room so you can be seen by multiple judges. Like. There's just there's not just mm. the simplicity of dance in a corner, do a great job. No, if if you're not seen, you're not going to get marked. Yeah. That's kind of one of the biggest. Do you think things. it's also on your appearance and how you look 100%. as well? Hundred percent. Yeah, your Thousand outfit, percent. your appearance, yeah, yeah, yeah. the mm-hmm. way you present, the even simply like walking onto the floor, making sure you've done like even a lap of the floor yeah. before you've even got into position to start your dance. Can like eye contact things that like if you're nervous, like you're looking at the floor, like you're not going to have any confidence. Whereas if you stare the judge in mm-hmm. the face, like. They know they've seen you and you've seen them. We always got told, once you are stood on the side of that floor, it's go time. Mm -hmm. You're in the best posture, best position, ready to rock and roll straight away there and then. And as soon as you walk on, you have that confidence. To the moment that you leave the floor and go behind a closed door, then you can relax and be yourself. How did you guys get into it then? Because you did say when you were younger, like you were adrenaline junkies. You didn't do dancing. At what age did you start and where did you pick all this up? Because you must have picked up quite fast if you weren't doing um, it. I was going on to 11, 11, 12. 12, Yeah. The thing was that that year, as you do as a child, you go, I want to go on TV. I was like, well, okay. Well, mum's like, well, how? Well, I was like, well, the only thing we kind of thought we could do, well, we'll do some dancing. Mm-hmm. And because was a your small, dad did, right? Yeah, and yeah. there was a small TV show that kind of came towards mm-hmm. a dance school, Baby Ballroom, that said, we need some little dancers. They're going to dance, learn yeah. some routines, and they'll go on TV. And we we're like, perfect. Okay. We'll take that. Um, <laughs> oh, we we did awful. Yeah. <laughs> crying, didn't get any recalls. And thankfully, it never made air. Like it's yeah. in the basement of the BBC somewhere, okay. never to be seen again. Hidden away, we hopefully deleted. That footage, yeah. BBC. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then mum and dad were like, this is great. They're upset. They're not going to do it. And the next day we were like, no, we love it. We want, we want to get better. And mm-hmm. then from that process was literally every single day, like for us, the best way to describe it is our house is actually our dance school. So we live above the dance school which dad teaches in so there's kind of no excuse like a lot of the time within dancing and any sport it's the amount of hours you put in like if you can train every single day as many hours as possible you are going to increase you can get better faster your 
than your competitors, mm. especially when most of our competitors are kind of foreigners that have got an unlimited bank balance and they've been training since the age of two. So mm-hmm. therefore like, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to get 10 years on my competitor within two years to even <laughs> get to where I want to be by the mm. age of 18, which was kind of the goal being number one in the world. You loved having the studio there. Didn't oh, I you absolutely there. loved it. I could train How until my feet were bleeding. Hard. Hard. Like- we, at the beginning, we start off with just a couple of hours each night. Yeah. But by the time you get to like you're 18 and you're properly wanting to train, you are training 10 hours a day. Like you are, and you it's do crazy. a competition every single weekend. Wow. And the one thing was, you you can lose a competition if someone's better than you. We, we can accept that. But you can never lose a competition if you're physically not the fittest. If you can't keep going, like that's on you. That's mm-hmm. just, it's embarrassing. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day so that, that was one of our things was like we will always be the fittest people turn yeah, up to yeah. the competition yeah. we'd never die if this is the first time you're tuning into the talk 20s podcast allow us to introduce you to our headline sponsors zopa bank home of the smart saver account if you're a long-term fan of the podcast you'll already know about zopa's smart saver which lets you save into personalized pots and boost your savings in exchange for a notice period to access your funds the longest notice period is 95 days and offers the highest interest rates. To find out more about Zopa's Smart Saver, download the Zopa app. We need to tell you that you need to save a minimum of £1 and the interest is paid monthly and is subject to variation. On with the show. So you were in Bella Italia and you hadn't won this competition. Yes, yes. <laughs> I wasn't happy. And then there was some producer that came to us and talked, oh, and I, was, I, was, I wasn't really taking notice. But anyway, mm. I got told that that was the head producers of Strictly and they want mm. me to go on Strictly. Didn't know anything really about me. Didn't know my nationality, if I was good, bad. Didn't really know anything. I just obviously looked good. And they're like, yeah. we want him. He's small. We need him for a small partner. Ah. I said no to them. Um, once, you said no twice to Strictly. Yeah, yeah. I said no times. He did yeah. two times. Why did you say no to Strictly? It just wasn't in my mentality of where I wanted to be. But you were a ballroom dancer. Yes, but I wanted to. Compete. Surely that's everyone's like. It, in terms of TV programs, this is the pinnacle of dance. In terms of actual competing and being the best in the world, it's nowhere near the pinnacle of dance. Okay. Yeah. And that's just a straightforward. And then, summit. therefore, one of the ladies that sponsored us at the time, because financially we couldn't afford to kind of travel the world and really spend enough money to get to where we wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So we had a sponsor and she passed away very, very suddenly due to um, bowel cancer. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that she always said um, was just take every single opportunity, like there's going to be crossroads, but take the opportunity because what's the worst that can happen at the end of the day? Like I'm, I'm 20 years old. I say yes. And I don't like it. I can go back to competing or, but you can't ever go the opposite way. Like I Mm -hmm. say, yes, I love it. I thrive. Like you're going to regret that for the rest of your life. So Mm -hmm. that was actually the reason why I chose Strictly, but this was all very last minute because they were kept they were like, no, we really want you. We really want you. And it was like a couple of weeks before the show started. And I was like, okay, why not? Mm-hmm. I remember I was cutting the lawn. Mum was like, here's a phone call. I was like, literally cutting the lawn. And I was like, the the one stipulation was, well, if you want me, you take my dance partner with me as well. And they were like, the hell? I could hear that they were obviously at a big board meeting. I didn't realize this at the time <laughs> of a lot of people. They and were like, wait, do we do this? Do we not? What's yeah, going and on? It was yeah. Like, and they were like, okay. And who, and was, your, who was your off. dance partner? My dance partner was Chloe Hewitt at the time. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then she got on Strictly at the same time as me. Yeah. And we were the first kind of couple to go on together. And it was fantastic. And I never looked back. Like it's it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. AJ had like one dance partner through his entire career. Which, yeah, which was yeah. very okay. rare. Because yeah. okay. most people yeah. like, okay. And who was your first celebrity? Partner? My first celebrity was Claudia Fragapani, okay. i.e. Yeah. Very small, so they is needed that why somebody they wanted to. You then, yes, like for Claudia. Yeah, and then Saffron as well. Who was yeah, so I went, um, How long were you on there for? I did four years on okay. Strictly. So Serial I, semi-finalist. Yeah, yeah. so it's <laughs> always kept out of that final slightly. So it's Claudia Fragapani was year one. Yeah. Then it was um, Molly King year two. Yeah. Year three was Lauren Stedman. So she's a Paralympian. Mm-hmm. And then year four was Saffron Barker, mm-hmm. the YouTuber. So mm-hmm. no, four very successful I years. Think with Claudia, you should have made the final, to be fair. Yeah, but it should have yeah, been in the final. Possibly Molly as well. You could have made mm-hmm. the final as well. Actually. But with Claudia, AJ, definitely. who was yeah. the best out of those four? I was lucky and I I honestly can say this I had four very nice people someone's media trained (laughs) okay imagine being having to work with somebody 12 hours a day for five months I know it's like asking me it's like asking to choose your children like your favourite child like Saffron was hilarious the fourth year like her her, herself her family I'd be like Saffron okay we're in London now Um, where were your shoes she'd go in Brighton 
I'd be like, okay, well, we kind of need them now. She'd go, oh, call my mum, won't I? <laughs> and then, and then oh we get God. to, she needs to upload a YouTube video, obviously, right now. She'd be like, oh, where's your charger? Because your laptop's obviously got no charger because you never mm. have a charger. And she goes, oh, it's at home, isn't it? That's we'll like us to, in the studio we'll today. You'll to notice I don't home. even have a talk to his mic today because you've only brought two because you never forgot we had two guests. Yeah, and someone we've also, lost their job this and, morning. Yeah, we also forgot our Riviera drinks, iced tea. They're our sponsors. Apparently we very, do love very them, nice. Which yeah. are amazing yeah. and AJ and Curtis won't have a chance That's to try them. Bit, we're a bit parched But we're right going to add in an advert here that talks about our amazing iced tea. <laughs> if you want to know what we're drinking here in the Talk 20 studio, then let me tell you because you're going to want to try it. Riviera iced tea is the newest sponsor of the Talk 20 podcast. It's low calorie, natural, vegan, and gluten-free. I'm absolutely obsessed with iced tea. I've just been laughing here about how obsessed I am with iced tea with our producer. It's my favorite drink in the whole wide world, no exaggeration. And the peach iced tea from Riviera is genuinely the best I've ever tasted. So if you want to fill your fridge with something super refreshing, head to rivieraiced.com or check out their Instagram at Riviera Iced Tea. We'll send you guys some in the post. That's so such a you can try segue them. to add yeah. that in there. I like that. <laughs> But no, definitely like your partners when you're working with someone, you just want to be smiling ear to it. And with Saffron, I, I was laughing 24 seven and yeah. we still got the job done. So that was the yeah. main thing. So Saffron was your favorite. She was hilarious. Yeah, she was. We got, we got it out of him. Good. We got it out of him. Um, so why did you end up leaving Strictly? Because that is the question. If you type into Google, yes. AJ Pritchard, the first question is, why did AJ leave Strictly? <laughs> I think for me, it's you can't do everything. And I think it's a really hard thing to say out loud sometimes because for me, I'm a professional dancer and I love it. I love everything about Strictly. I love what it stands for and I love my time on the show. But at the end of the day, you can't grow as a person if you do something for the rest of your life. You have to set new challenges for yourselves. Maybe a bad time to have chose to leave <laughs> considering you COVID hit like, oh like immediately yeah. afterwards. Um, but you can't prepare for that sort of thing. And for me, growing as a person... Like I've done so many things right now and I'm in so many more fortunate positions and rooms and, and creating business opportunities that I would not physically be able to do, let alone if I was doing that show, just sheer time. And I think it's something important, whereas people always feel like this is everything. This is your whole life. Whereas at the end of the day, life is so much bigger than one opportunity. Like if you don't have your eyes wide open to traveling, to being able to do, to do that. Like I worked 12 hours a day, every single day of that six months of Strictly. Then you do the pantomime I'd do for three or four weeks. Then I'd do an arena tour for six weeks. Then I'd do my own tour for a handful of weeks. Then I'd go on to a pro tour I'm exhausted for and I only do an hour a week weeks. And then I'd try and get a holiday and then I'd start Strictly again. So imagine that for four years straight. And you're like, mm. okay, um, I think I need to maybe widen my horizon. It becomes a box, doesn't it? If you don't yes, actually yeah, yeah. break free and do something different. I think it's also very tiring. Like ballroom dancing, there's just a lot of exercise oh involved. Gosh, yeah. Like it is, it looks it maybe easy cake. from the outside, <laughs> but like it is difficult. They like, say it's good for you, but we've both had operations on our legs because of dancing. Yeah, <laughs> just a couple of keyhole surgeries and, yeah. and mm -hmm. some things like that. But no, dancing is, is a fantastic sport. Mm -hmm. Physically and, and mentally, definitely. Mentally. And Strictly is, I think, the only TV show, but maybe Dance on Ice, you could say the same aspect, where you actually get given a professional and are taught hands-on how to become a kind of towards a professional within a skill. And that's just magical for the teacher and the student mm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And throughout this whole time of AJ being on Strictly, Curtis, you had you were what were you doing at the time? You were still I was on Dancing with the Stars in Ireland. So the okay. Irish version of Strictly Come Dancing. Okay. So he was doing that and I was on there. But for the first, I don't know, was it the last part? Then I went on to Love Island. Was that your last time? Wait, wait, wait. You can't miss out the best part of this story. Well, what do you mean? My career and my history. Curtis on... has got the best right. statistical so, yes, career did... in any Dancing with Stars <laughs> all over the world. And it's franchised <laughs> out to like 60 or 70 nations or something ridiculous. <laughs> right, here it is. So I did Dancing with Stars in Ireland. The Irish version of Strictly, I did three seasons. So yeah. the first season I had a model and we got eliminated week one. Bam! Ow. Yeah, and yes, it was. Yeah, um, a bit sad, wasn't it? Second okay. year, I had... Was she bad? No, she wasn't that bad. I just don't think people tend to... <laughs> the Irish... My favourite country in the world, Dublin. Love it. Love it to bits. But the Irish, I, um, sometimes... I was told... If there is an attractive person, sometimes they don't go with that person. Okay. And she was a model, so perhaps that mm -hmm. was a situation. The next person was a business lady, Nora Casey. Mm -hmm. Great, great woman. Real, real 
strong independent lady had mm-hmm. loads going on um, got eliminated week two bam yes. straight out and, and then like, the third year came back well actually yeah. we got jumped in a nightclub yeah we got so banged yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah, ended up getting a, in a bad situation yeah. I was in hospital had to have an operation on my left knee face was all smashed up so they brought in a surrogate partner to dance with my celeb okay they got eliminated week one so then I came back so week two. even Ghost of You <laughs> didn't make it past yeah. week I one. I came back week two and yeah. then that was it. I had to do nothing. Oh so my, my pay to work was fantastic. Because yeah, pay per actually... steps. You were oh. winning. Yeah. God. That's crazy. Got paid unbelievable for the work I did. So find yeah. a positive in there somehow. I know, yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. So talk to me a little bit then because you did just mention it. Like what happened when you mentioned that you got assaulted? Mm. That kind of is a little bit of a catalyst to a bit of this story because you did allude yeah, to it earlier. Like, I, would, I would say, I don't know if this is the truth or yeah. not, but I would say, right, Love Island, they always tend to take somebody with a famous brother. So, for example, my year was myself, or, or sister. Relative. Or, or, yeah, 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 yeah. a relative. A relative or something. Sorry, I didn't yeah, mean brother. Like a, I meant a relative, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for me, it was um, Tommy Fury. He had his brother, Sassam Fury. Yeah. Me. I had you, AJ. Yeah. So I think that helped. But because we got jumped, we were in the front page of the papers. We got put onto the news everywhere. Mm. And I think that also got me spotted by them as well and realised, okay, now he's got a little bit of interaction into the public straight away. He's got a famous brother. Mm -hmm. He isn't too bad looking. There's a tension around him. Mm -hmm. Let's bring him on Love Island. And what were your thoughts about going on Love Island? Kurt was sold like, nine week holiday in the sun. (laughs) Free holiday. (laughs) single. Free food. (laughs) Son, I just great. come out of a long term relationship as well. So I've been mm. with somebody for about two and a half, going on three years, and we just split up and stuff um, about five, six months beforehand. So I was like, I'm single. Mm-hmm. It's something different than the dancing. I'm going in the sun. I'll probably last two weeks in there. That's it. Let's go on and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And I had the best time ever. Yeah, a but, roller coaster of a ride. But the, we'll reason, the reason why you did so good from the outside is like you I'd never, never watched, it watched before the show going before. On. So you had no about. opinions yeah. on it and you really? had no idea mm. of, of the premise of, of how the show works. I told them I'd what watched it. What season was this? Remind season me. Season five. I think everyone says that it was the best season as well. And, it was and the most viewed just, season. Yeah. You were just season. like yeah. the catalyst for every single debate and problem. Like your opinion <laughs> was just like, you said it so blunt in between things that it was like, Oh no, you can see it unfolding I, happening in your eyes. I like to talk to people and if somebody wants some well, advice or wants help, I will happily help people. Yeah. And for some reason I seem to be mature in there. I am not mature at all, I'll tell you. But Do you still like to make people's coffee in the morning? I do make coffee actually, yeah. Because <laughs> you did go pretty viral yeah, for that, I've right? I've got a great coffee machine at home and it is my baby, my pride and joy. I love it. Do people still ask you about that? They do. It, that's what people will come yeah. up to me on the street. They, they'll either say, I came back here to tell you I love you, what Amy yeah. said to me. I or, came back here to yeah, tell you yeah. I love you. Or will you make us a coffee? Or get, can you say, yeah. I, I want to get up and make everyone a coffee in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> no, I do think like you will be remembered like forever on that season. And I you, need to bring my own coffee brand out or something. You do, something. Yeah. Like, I want to be the person yeah. that makes everyone coffee in the morning. Kurt's <laughs> coffee. I just want to get up and make your coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you did mention, obviously, on uh, Dancing with the Stars in Ireland that Mm. you were paired with an Irish model to begin with. You did kind of have a similar experience on Love Island as well with another very famous (laughs) Irish model. Smooth move there, Gabs. Uh, <laughs> She's like, oh my God, I actually forgot who you were even on about. You were back, <laughs> it, took, it took me oh, a second. I was, was thinking, like, I was actually thinking, like, who the hell are you on Amy's about? Are you Irish, <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. And I think she's iconic. What's your she thoughts on that? She's absolutely iconic. She's a very attractive lady aura. and super iconic. Um, <laughs> she's doing great in her presenting, I think. She's yeah. just done a presenting out in, in America, hasn't she? In Fiji, doing Love Island games and stuff. Yeah. So. Which you did meet on and have uh, yeah. a very brief encounter. Yes, we did. Is we it did. awkward meeting, like doing shows like that when you're like faced with your exes sometimes? No. I don't find any of that awkward, to really? be fair. Yeah, I'll always, I always end things very civil and stuff. And yeah. truthfully, <laughs> I ain't got enough time to be worried and, about stuff like that, yeah. the awkwardness of that. Where I'm I'm civil. I haven't got time for like host, 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 hostility. hostility. That's the word I'm looking for, yeah. yeah. Hostility and stuff. It's so, kind yeah. of one of those things like you're all on a show and like everyone goes in with different, different outlooks on life it's and stuff like that. It's not real life. Like, we yeah. are real people, but it's a unique scenario. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, 99% of people that go on there are going on there to boost their career. They're going on there for money. They're going on there for a brand deal. When they come off, if they find love, that's a bonus and a yeah. win situation. But most of the time it is for other reasons, yeah. Are you still friends with anyone? 
yeah, from most your season them, or yeah, any other Love, love Islanders. Them, um, yeah. I don't really hang out with that many of them. I don't really message that many of them now. We sort of went separate ways after. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to focus on my career and work as soon as I came out of it because um, I had great opportunities come up whilst I was in there and yeah. I like, had a panto signed ready to go after. No, I had signed, the greatest I, dancer. Wait, I signed the greatest <laughs> dancer before he'd even got yeah, off the like, TV had, show for you. Yeah, I had all these things and like I couldn't sign them because I wasn't there. The greatest there, dancer, so. that was an amazing show by it the way. It was amazing. Fantastic. They yeah. just, right, the why problem did, was, show was go? unbelievable. It was so good. They just put too much money on it for the first two seasons. Right. So it couldn't make the money back. And oh. what they spent yeah. on them judges yeah. was unbelievable. Was Cheryl Cole was one of them. Tod Todrick Hall, Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl Cole, um, um, Matthew, Matthew Morris. Matthew. Ma oh, yes, yeah. from Glee. Uh, from Glee, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, Whoever that was, 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 was it Oti? Oti, Oti, yeah, Oti, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 I think we caked me up with a little bit too much makeup on that. I look back at it and think, wow, you look plastic, Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get a clip up of it. But that show was iconic. Like, I want a petition to bring that back and we'll just yeah. have to get a maybe slightly show. smaller yeah. LED wall. But like, it was really good. It was and the, really the funniest good. thing was when they came into the, the kind of the waiting room with you, they didn't know it was you. The, no, that, that's, yeah, that, that was, was legit. That, yeah. that was like when they saw Curtis, they're like, Oh, and my you literally God, just like, come out of Love Island, so it was, you were obviously quite a big, oh, yeah. big face. I'm not going to lie, I had a rock star moment there. So, uh, yeah, so they brought all the judges. You got more of a. Oh, 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 it was yeah. crazy, wasn't it? <laughs> so they brought all the judges on stage, and the audience gave them a, a quick cheer and stuff. And then, because I had just come off Love Island, yeah. actually, like a week before, I walked on stage, and I've it's never insane. heard a crowd go so wild. It was, for, I felt I felt like Beyonce. I'm not even, <laughs> it was awesome. I was like taking a bow, I was like playing with the crowd. It was great. Yeah, it's when the other judges just stood there outside, like, <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I was like, I'm not as famous as any of you, like, yeah. <laughs> Kurt's like, I just make coffee. Yeah. <laughs> just a dancer that makes coffee, guys. <laughs> You've had some, like, crazy TV experiences, yeah. but one thing that was not on my bingo card ever for you two was appearing on Hollyoaks. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Proud GCSE acting over here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if there's a job going and it's COVID, you know what? You've got to pay the bills, haven't you? I just felt sorry Is for that me genuinely on that. the reason? Yeah, we were in yeah. COVID. We had no That's work like, or anything. How do we Legally leave the house. Yeah, and, Holly and Hollyoaks Holly is, Holly is in Liverpool. <laughs> oh, forget what's in Chester and Nibble. That's off. Not feel, too far. I, I, I feel bad for all of the actors that have trained all their life and they struggle to get a job, and we managed to sneak that in. <laughs> I do feel was bad the part for them. Written for you guys is what I want to know. Like, yes, did, because yes. it was oh, yeah, so yeah. around dancing. The like, irony yeah. was like our original. I don't know how they work, but they're, they, they were literally trained in scripts as we went. But our original things was literally <laughs> rather than being AJ, were. it was just like. PJ and Curtis was like, Oh, it was, wasn't and it? I was like, yeah. Wait, no, I think you've got to make the names a bit different. We may as well just call like Marco him my, my or something yeah. like that. Marco was yeah. my, my third take of names. That was like Jacob. Yeah, Jacob think, or something yeah. like that. Jacob. I, think I mean, so. it was hilarious. And because it was, actually, we shouldn't laugh, but because it was the time
Kurt, go on. House trash. That's it. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what's my... She thought Finally, you... what time do you call this? Oh, that was it. Yeah. Mum ain't going to be happy. <laughs> Somewhat like that. Uh, my favourite one is probably stop whinging. <laughs> probably stop whinging. Yeah, it's probably... I still <laughs> say that now. As he's spinning around on the, <laughs> the merry-go-round. Probably stop whinging. Um, yeah, honestly, too funny. But I actually love that you guys would just laugh about it now. Like, it's I think it is, it so is funny. funny. It is funny. Kurt's went famous in India. Kurt's had over 100 million views for that in India. I was oh like, my God. Wow, this is amazing. How do we capitalize on I've this? Done that Isn't twice, this the to biggest, be fair. Yeah. the biggest like viewed clip from Hollyoaks ever? Hollyoaks ever. as ever. themselves, as Hollyoaks, yeah. were so happy. Were they? Ever. they were yeah. ecstatic. And we've not been killed off, so we could come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically, we're not dead. I'm yeah. probably still that, spinning. That laugh is don't come back. <laughs> So hang on, wait. Will are you guys going back on Holly Oaks? Oh Christ Almighty! I don't know. Yes. Do you think they genuinely? No, I've got and no then, idea. No. We'll probably never be Kurt asked wants back. To go back. You definitely want to I go would, back. I would. I would. I would. Mm-hmm. Where do you see your characters go going? I don't know. Oh. In circles, by look. So for me, <laughs> taking Trish's little black book. We'll get really? it this time. That, that bugger got away with it. Oh, it, honestly, so funny. But I, I do think that like, if you could look back on that time, would you still do it? Like, do it all over again? 100%, like all those kind of things. Yeah. Like, thousand percent. Yeah, it's funny. Hundred percent, I'd do it again. And um, I actually fell in love with acting after that, so I've actually had a load of acting lessons and stuff oh, really? since then. So I'd like to think I'm a little bit better. <laughs> Hey, How did you train? Because it wasn't literally it. just like you've got an acting job, you hadn't done much training, like went into Hollyoaks. How did it go? Like, you've got an acting job, you've, got, you've done no training. Here's there's a script. a script. See you later. Really? <laughs> get, how did you get there how on the day? You, well, how, that's not the script prepare, anymore. Like, because I think me personally, I find learning lines really hard. Like, if you were to give me this and to like remember it, I just can't do it. Like, how do you even go about learning lines? I did it by which. Uh, regrettably I did it like this I did it by looking in the mirror and trying to make myself really angry and stuff and okay. then uh, because it was like an angry part what? of the yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was trying to just say the lines like that but what I should have done I don't think I've laughed this much on the podcast before <laughs> can you just picture me just in picture front you doing of the it. mirror yeah, yeah, yeah. that screwed it himself finally <laughs> <laughs> but what I should have done is actually try to say my lines and just keep reading them and say them in different emotions so say I'm angry say I'm happy say I'm sad mm-hmm. and say it like this and then I would have just found a nice character and then played that yeah. that's what I should have done in hindsight no, I, I think when it comes down to Hollyoaks like we've been given a script for example and then yeah. we'd arrive and day the guy would be like nope 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 here's a new script he'd be like okay cool well we've learned that but but the answer to your question specifically yeah. is like say we, when we do pantomimes yeah. we choreograph the words so like I'll walk to this table I'll say a line here yeah. I'll walk over there I'll say a line there and then that makes it very mm. easy to remember words and because it's kind of a bit like, like dancing as well it's a dance well. move yeah. 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 Rubbish. he's had the same script for three years <laughs> I yeah, have on pantomime it now. <laughs> yeah, I have to remember it now. <laughs> Honestly, I think, you know, when I said to people like that you guys were coming onto the podcast. They said, they, don't bring them on. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was like, I was like saying, I was like, you know, AJ's been on Strictly and like Curtis has been on Love Island and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, are they the guys that have been, <laughs> been on Hollyoaks? And they knew you Duh. from the meme. <laughs> Everyone they knows us from, from that meme. meme. <laughs> Like I was like, they're not just the guys that have been on Hollyoaks. It's funny you should say it because sometimes we do, people see us and they ask for photo and sometimes it's like, why do you want a photo with us? Which TV show? Yeah, Which yeah, thing? Yeah. Like, because people have so many different opinions of us from the different hunted. shows. Because you, you, you get a lot, lot from the hunted, as hunted well, and, and, yeah. and SAS, like SAS, mm, so like, SAS is just a cult yeah. audience. Yeah, yeah, like, really? they are like, oh my god, I love you on that show. Yeah. And like, is it real? And is the it way real? you did, oh, it is. Oh, yeah, it's beyond. Yeah, yes what was your experience then? What you said, yes and no. Yeah, but only because what what right what what the DSs do to you is real. What okay. they put you through is real. But I would like to say producers don't talk to them behind closed doors and say perhaps we want this person to stay or perhaps we want this okay. person to go but that does happen okay yeah you can't say something you don't actually know mm, I, I, is it just because i won suspicions. is it because i've won? heard stories of people that okay. perhaps were going to get booted Producers out and then they did Producers messing with the show? That would never happen. TV? No. Never. No. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what was your experience, AJ? Uh, no, I absolutely loved it. For me, like mentally, um, you kind of go into that show, it's more than just the physical side, it's the mental side. And it's just, it's what's small story mm. that's deep deep in you that you think actually I need to address this and that's the one thing with that show like for me mentally I went through a traumatic accident mm-hmm. um, and um, dealing with fire and, and being able to speak about it and emotionally do it in in a in a TV show environment I thought would never never be the case yeah. and I didn't really ever think of it as being a TV show I, I didn't I never even looked at a camera once on that show and usually I'd be like okay camera one camera two camera three I, I know I know in my head it's there because mm-hmm. I've been trained that way. And on that show, it was just about 
dealing with the situation that's at hand, physically and mentally getting through something and really ticking something off that allows you to kind of go back to the normal civilized world in a much better position mentally. Mm. And and that show it's quite a wholesome really show. Helped. Like oh, it's quite yeah. like a journey that you go on. You, like, know, yeah. you know who has it really hard in that show? The cameramen. Really? Oh my god! Because <laughs> yeah. if you think everything yeah. we're doing, so if it's running, yeah, how are they filming? True. The cameraman's got to be running next to you. They've got to be in the gas room. They've got to be in all of That's these areas. True. The so, camera guys on that show were, yeah. were fantastic. Behind the scenes team on that were physically and mentally uh, amazing. And mm. and the irony is when we do TV shows and it productions, even on Strictly, like it's not just you in that room. It's the the, the people that make these TV shows fantastic shows mm. are because the hard work that goes in from the behind the scenes mm-hmm. and and. That's something that is, if if it was its own show in reality, when I think about it now, of the behind the scenes of every show mashed up into one, you, you, you'd you just be laughing here to it because it would be insane, actually, you would be yeah. like, you wouldn't believe it. Half you'd the stuff that happens, you'd just be like, how's, how's this happening? It'll be draw, dro- jaw dropping as well. <laughs> Some of the stuff you yeah. did. <laughs> Edit quite a bit out. <laughs> you also done I'm a Celeb as well. That yes. That must be a whole other experience in you itself. You did it in Wales, what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Celeb. Okay, I signed a contract <laughs> to go to Australia and be nice and warm. They had heaters in there. And then they were like, it's and happening in Wales. It's like, it's in Wales. I was like, I know, it's 45 minutes from my house. I know where it is. Bloody freezing this time it kind of defeats the object of it, don't you think? Don't you think? <laughs> it was You're not really, really in a jungle and having to It was to really sad. I feel like I've done a different show than I'm a slave. I did a cast, castle special and I know that they created lots of fantastic things like like Go Ape sort of style within the trees. But yeah. because of COVID and internally, um, a lot of people did get COVID on the crew side. Mm. So it meant physically like we couldn't get harnessed up. We couldn't do things that would allow us to make that show amazing in the UK. Mm. So it, it was a hard one, but I met friends for life like Mo Farrow. Like I texted him the other day and I'll yeah. call him afterwards. And, like, Does people he help, like help that. you with your running? Uh, he did actually give us some tips and that, but yeah. I was like, Mo, you're just so quick. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. No, I need to get to this level before even doing them tips. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, on them shows, it was a really good one just to talk to people, enjoy yeah. Yeah. but it wasn't I'm a celebrity as we love and, yeah. and know and that was a bit sad but at the end of the day I had the opportunity to go and do a TV show at a time of COVID again mm. when other people were stuck at home so I was very appreciative of doing it. Was it two it. years that it was in Wales? Two, two years, years yeah and, and I did the first, first year. It was Giovanna trial and error. Giovanna Fletcher yeah, yeah, that one, um, yeah. uh Oh, bloody hell, names going on my head now, but yeah, no, it was a fantastic. Was Vernon, yeah. in your Vernon, K, um, Russell Watson, yeah. um, um, your best friend um, who didn't wash the pots very well, Shane Ritchie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Shane Ritchie. What was he like? He was, he was fine. Yeah, Shane's but lovely. <laughs> the irony was a lot of people within that show got really ill, so it was kind of like yeah. you kind of felt sorry for people for like three or four days. Were literally just like so, bed what, what was bound. It? Do you reckon that was? Due to food and stuff, or yeah, I think food. I think a lot of people weren't prepared for like once you cut out sugar yeah. and caffeine, yeah. like oh, yeah. you withdrawal. You take yeah. a dive. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Did you lose weight and like everything on the show? Like, did I you, gained did weight. You... I don't know how. I eat more rice than ever. I was like, what's ha- what happening to me? <laughs> Carbohydrates. I'm not running. I'm not dancing. I'm just eating rice consistently. <laughs> Well, what, what, Makes all the other people really bad now, that sounds, AJ, because they're all complaining about losing yeah, weight, every- <laughs> struggling. I'd have loved to have lost a bit of weight, to be honest. You actually you, you actually did come out pretty much exactly the same. You did. And you know when you lot were all Thanks. saying it's so cold, I'm pretty sure there was one night no, where you were all no, in your we, underwear, like for example, walking around. <laughs> How is it that cold that you're all in your underwear walking around? For example, there's cushions on the ceiling here. We had small heaters so that it didn't get to hypothermic level. It was like minus two, three, four at that time of year. So Mm. we couldn't leave us in Wales. That's still a heater. Yeah, we don't want to freeze to You had a heater? No, they were like just small heaters. (laughs) So you had a heater in the the castle? Insurance purposes, we couldn't get hypothermic. I'm a celeb. Yeah, yeah, I can't get around this, can I? (laughs) You did. You did say you had a small heater. Yeah. You. I thought you have to build your own fires. I thought that was the point of it. Welcome to, stay to TV. Warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a lot. There was a lot of features. There was a lot of features on this one that was like kind of. It was trial and error. It was a first yeah. one. Yeah. It was a new country, new place. Yeah. For it was like new throwing episode. some logs. What at were us. the views Don't like? Was it? Did it get good views? Oh, insane! I think yeah. we nearly had like 15 million viewers a night. Did some good actually. Well, you sat at home during COVID. Yeah, you can't true. go out. Everyone literally had to watch it. Yeah. This is this is amazing. I'll be honest. I watched that season. I didn't watch the next one that was in the castle because you could go out. Yeah, probably. One of the things we really wanted to chat about on the podcast as well is that like you guys 
obviously you've done a lot of dancing. You've also been on TV a lot. And like we alluded to at the beginning that like people do care about what they look like on TV quite a lot mm. of the time. We've had previous guests who are very concerned about, you know, how they appear on like even on the podcast and stuff like that. Is that something that impacts you a lot from having been on shows that a lot are about appearance and things like I that? I got body shamed and fat shamed by most of the press when I was on uh, Love Island because really? I was the fat but one. You did in... get a Weight Watchers <laughs> campaign afterwards. Really? I know. Yes, I did. Thank you, Weight Watchers. <laughs> Actually, it's WW now. Okay. WW Reimagined. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not that I am sponsored oh, by them anymore. Did that anymore. have an impact on you then? Uh, no, not really, because I got a great contract after it. So actually, thank you for, I would yeah. always say thanks for the papers for doing that because it allowed me to buy a place in London. So it, Oh my it, God, it, like a really big contract. It, 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 it wasn't too bad, I can't complain. So yeah, 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 yeah it was so nice. It, I mean, like it's one of those It's, it's a hard yeah. one. I think when you work within our industry, the dance industry to start off with, you're always going to be like, okay, very tight outfits and, and yeah. physically like you've got to be strong to do that lifts and sort of that side thing. But I think it's really hard in this day and age that you do, social media expands that so much more. Mm -hmm. You do take care of yourself for both purposes. But for me, I always tie it in together. Like physically, if I feel fit and look good, like mentally, I feel good. But that's not, I don't see that as a negative thing. I think that's that's a positive thing, mm -hmm. but that's my own personal opinion. And I've seen it happen to a lot of people mm -hmm. that it doesn't go that way. It, it can turn very negative very quickly mm -hmm. but I always think like well are, you know deep down if you're happy with yourself whether somebody would say something or wouldn't say something and I think like that's the, I, you may say that's a bit brutal but no, that's yeah. how I feel personally how I look at the, the press for me is if, if it's like weight for me, if they said something about my weight, if it's derogatory, I'm not or, actually going yeah. to be bothered because yeah. I can do something about that. Mm. If they said something about me that I actually can't really do anything about, then maybe I'd be a bit like, you savage, mm. Mm. <laughs> little bugger. But buggers. do you feel like you have to do something about it? Like if someone says something about you, like a weight related, for example, because I, like, I think a lot of people like in the public eye will be like, you know, I've got, you know, if people do get like, shamed because of yeah. like what they look like and their size and stuff like that like should there be there shouldn't be a pressure right like no, is it not a, an it, overwhelming thing I, for the I always say you should be healthy mm. so if, if you are taking yourself down a track which is becoming unhealthy then perhaps maybe you should do something or have a little look at some things just mm -hmm. because it's going to have real effects on yourself mentally physically and all of these things it does make sense talk to me about the ups and downs of the entertainment industry then because you guys have a very long list and resume mm. like cv like you've done the lot but there's so many highs within that but there's also a lot of lows like talk to me about some of the harder parts i think um the the entertainment industry is 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 so roller coaster from ups and downs and i think that from for, i'll say my point of view mm. first curtis yeah. it's you don't know when you're going to get the next job and I think the hardest thing is preparing for something that you can't prepare for. So you could get yeah, a big contract yeah. and that could pay you well. Mm -hmm. And you're working for six months time or even shorter or maybe longer, whatever that may be. But you can't guarantee that every single year, even to the point of Strictly, within multiple years on Strictly, and I only did it for four years, I didn't know if I got a job the day before I started. Really? And how can a company like the BBC think that that's an okay thing to do? Maybe for somebody that's young with mental health, financially, you have to live in London and living in London is is not mm. easy at the best of times. So I think for me within the industry itself of kind of, you have to kind of work out what works for you mentally. How can you be in a confident position? And I think for me, my thing's always been finances. Mm. If I know financially I'm in a secure situation, I'm not going to stress if I'm not, say, specifically working and earning money for six to eight months, uh, but I'm working and growing myself as a person and I'm working on businesses behind the scenes that I will never talk about. That's allowing me to do that. So I think the roller coaster of our industry is about kind of thinking, not living at the height of when everything's great. It's about can you control living at the lows when everything is not mm -hmm. good? And I think this sort of impact through press and social media, everybody always posts the highs and they show the strengths and um, the great things of what you do, but nobody ever posts the kind of like when you're quiet. Like my was like, well, why would you leave Strictly or why would you do this? I am in the best position in my life ever, physically, mentally, business wise mm -hmm. in every single aspect because I prepared for that the day that I got my first paycheck on Strictly first thing I did was like okay I'm going to invest it I'm going to be smart I'm going to understand how much tax I got to pay I'm not going to pay £40,000 tax to the government on doing this you know what I'll put in a sit pension because I don't want to give it to government I'll save it for myself later mm -hmm. it's not tied away I can use that to buy a, a limited put yeah, a it into business. a limited company or a business property or mm -hmm. there's so many ways to do it like but I made sure that I prepare five, 10 years in advance. I never think tomorrow 
I always mm. think 10 years. So therefore I can be relaxed. And our industry is not that way. No. It's about now, yeah. what's yeah. happening, who's yeah. good right now. And I think that's when you have to flip it on the head. It's always about long term. Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to live and enjoy life. Now I'm not saying don't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, just take a step back and think. And sometimes life can be so fast paced that nobody ever just has a second goes, okay, well, maybe at university now working on something, but you can't guarantee that's going to get your job here. Mm -hmm. Like think long, who, long term. Who taught you this mindset though? Um, I've always been very OCD Competitions. And, and very kind of like, yeah, like if yeah. I'm going to train to be number one in the world, you can't, that's not an overnight thing. Like you have to understand that working hard for something is a long game. And it's always about put all them small things in each day, that compounding interest of like maybe getting stronger, getting fitter, learning something to do with something you don't know, whatever that may be, that allows you to be a better person a more well-rounded person mm. and I think that's kind of the thing that we've been through in our lives we've been through so many highs but we've also been through so many lows losing people suddenly from like being at school leukemia takes on me and then somebody has a freak accident that's like within one year of our life mm. our sponsor passes away within a week of speaking to her like dancing that was mm -hmm. why I did strictly like things that happen that you can never prepare, prepare for freak accidents like mm -hmm. you have to kind of think like life's very short, but life can be long. So mm -hmm. why can I make a decision now that everything, oh, I'm gonna live in now, I'm gonna spend all my money, I'm gonna do this. But that's gonna screw you over for the rest of your life if you're not sensible. You have to find a happy medium with that. You so have Curtis, to enjoy do you, yourself. Do you agree? I agree with everything KJ's saying, uh, absolutely. I'd say some of the other side of things with um, putting yourself in the public eye and going on TV is the press can write anything that's been wrote down, whether it's true or false. And by that, I mean, let's say somebody from a fake account on Twitter or something like that writes just a random fake, completely made up message or mm. or lie that said, let's just say, oh, Curtis is dancing with somebody else or doing something. The press can then run that story and create a full story out of it, even and quote though, that. and quote it and everything, and then create something. That's all fake. So that side of things is annoying and can be very hard when you open yourself up into public eye. But then it comes down to what support network do you have around you? Very close to my family, got great friends from childhood, always kept them as my friends. And I would always talk to people like that. And so really it doesn't get to me at all. Mm -hmm. They're just thick skin. And I think that comes from what AJ was saying, the competitive background, mm -hmm. you know, resilience, not always winning the competitions in the first days. You've got to get back on the horse. You've got to get back doing mm -hmm. it. Work forward, work forward, work forward then eventually you can win something and then you can get them end goals, which everybody sees in this day-to-day -day age now on social media. You don't realize you have to work your, your bollocks off, your socks mm -hmm. off to, to get there really. Mm -hmm. well, I think like kind of, I always think life has been a, a game mm. and I know it's, 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 this works for me personally. I'm like, well, it's one big game. Well, just play the game, understand it. Like you don't have to do everything the way it is. It's game, work out how it's going to benefit you what do you want like say we're setting this company up right now like like how can you okay the government has grants well how can we work out to get a grant to maybe better suit this or mm -hmm. claim this equipment back like whatever it may be mm -hmm. just find out what game you're playing and be the best at it because mm -hmm. everybody can succeed and i think this is a uk mentality that we've always struggled with like in the uk it's like well if i'm going to help you what are you getting from it well, what mm -hmm. am I getting for it? Like, you know, dancing. I was like, no, 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 we're both going to improve. We're going to train together. Whereas we would always compete with uh, America, Canada, Russia, Ukraine, like all these Eastern Bloc countries. They would always work together because they know that together they're so much stronger. Like we all succeed. We don't just like, you can't do one business on your own. You have to have a team around you. It's impossible. There's only so much time in the day. And plus, like you have to tell yourself, well, I'm smart this, I know this. I don't know that, but the only way I'll know it is if I bring somebody on board and we can work together. And I think that's one thing that we've definitely learned over the past couple of years. Like you, you can't do everything yourself, Like mm -hmm. you've got to open up. Well, we always ask our guests on the podcast because I think this is the, this idea that like everyone in their 20s, they're all working through something. Like everyone mm. is, we see like you've just mentioned so many times, like we see the best bits on social media, yeah. but we don't see behind the scenes. And like, we know that nobody's perfect. Everybody's usually working on getting better at something. For you guys, what are you, what are you both working on getting better at this moment in time? Oh, mine, I'd say, is always um, mental health. 
mm. constantly that, but it's doing things like what AJ said, fitness, doing things I enjoy doing. Mm. So I always try and make sure I'm doing things like that. That's mm. something that I think will always be constantly something I just do for the rest of my life. But um, <laughs> I'm going to say fitness is definitely one of my uh, things that I want to get back into. I've had a couple of injuries in my life. And I'm really wanting to actually focus on recovering my hip, my mm -hmm. knees. Like I said before, I've had a couple of operations, no cartilage in my left knee. Um, I want to get my body back to a good physical strength. Mm -hmm. So I don't mean like losing fat or anything. I just mean build muscle and build all of the small muscles around my joints and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm really working on. He's, uh, he's working for, for the half bath for the next year. Yeah, yeah, it's well, it it's because I've realised I'm 28 years old now and I used to dance every single day and I was so, so fit. And it really does make you so fit. And then now that I've got older, doing TV work and this and that, sometimes I haven't done exercise for a long period of time. And I'll tell you, I notice it. Mm. And I'm not saying I'm old, but like a hangover, for example, takes longer to recover now. If I do a run, it takes a couple more days well, to recover. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, I, I notice it unless I keep here, doing we? things. Like, so that's one of my goals. There's one more thing. Oh, yeah. Go on. Finance as well. This is the biggest thing. Actually, I should have just said this before. I've always not been amazing with finance. AJ's been great with it. No, I think one Kurt's, of my... Kurt's understating the, how no. bad. Oh, God. I, I mean, it's how not bad, that Kurt, so we're talking. bad. I just mean money's money, you know. It grows on trees, doesn't so it? So AJ's mindset <laughs> about like thinking ahead and planning ahead you don't share that mindset uh, oh I think ahead and stuff yeah. do I plan ahead that's a different scenario okay. I, I plan ahead in certain situations when it's come to money um, I just have not been amazing with it just not looked yeah. after it truthfully um, yeah and I would say it's because I was never educated in that way and stuff and didn't realise and I say this to a lot of people you don't realise what you actually spend and what you spend things on and then after a long period of time and once I was lucky enough to go on Love Island, come into a little mm -hmm. bit more money, you start buying more things and then your natural just living expenses become more mm -hmm. and you get a mortgage and then you realize you're having to pay thousands of pounds a month on top of all of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just adds up. And before you know it, money doesn't last. So now something I'm doing is writing down my spending every single day and getting on top of my um, finances. And I'll tell you what, for my mental health, for everything, it's made a massive difference. Mm -hmm. I feel so much more in control of my life because I know what I'm spending. I know what I have left to spend and I know what I can do with my money. And because I know all of that, I know, oh, actually, I can go on holiday there or I can invest there or I can or I can't buy that. And what's quite nice about that is as well, actually, it's making me have to save up and work for things again to be able to then buy them and stuff mm -hmm. now, which is actually making me appreciate. Things like I think you're right. Like we talk about it a lot on the podcast. Like we're just not given this foundation yeah. for money, which no. means that so many people in our community through Talk 20s and stuff, we're are saying like, I need help with my money. I've not, mm. I've not, I've not learned about it. And I think it's nice to really see people who are in the public eye going, this is how I manage yeah. my money. Like being being open and being transparent and literally talking that about it. That loud budgeting, I think it's yeah, so good to exactly. see that. Exactly. It, it's just, it's just really, it's really nice to see. So I, I love that you guys are championing in that and I keep continuing to do so because I think a lot of people will appreciate the transparency and I think it will do a lot of good for a lot of people. So, so keep that up. Hopefully. Like, yeah, yeah, hopefully. It that's, definitely that's will. The aim. Um, but we always end the podcast by asking the same question that we ask all of our guests. And if you, if you could look back to 20 year old AJ or 20 year old mm. Curtis mm. and give them just one piece of advice, what would you want to say to them? Mine would be, you're a lot younger than you realize still. So mm. you're not too old to change your career, to go into something new and to fully throw yourself into it. 20 is still very young, mm -hmm. but I felt like an old man at that point. I thought this is it, whatever I'm doing with my career is my career. I can't change now, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I would have perhaps gone to boxing or something. Anthony Joshua, I think at 19 years old, that's when he started boxing. He's a world champion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that age, it's very true. you're not old, you're mm -hmm. still young. What you say, um, Can I, you top that? What are you going to say now, AJ? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for me, it's always just about the same. I, I wouldn't change anything. I honestly wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, take every single opportunity because that's all we continue to do and all I ever continue to do. is like, if you can go and do that dinner or introduce yourself to somebody else, do, do it. it. Yeah. Just do it because you never know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing with do, doing these podcasts. Like, mm -hmm it's so nice because you're like okay now it sparks a, a new thought process you never know what's going to happen put yeah. yourself in, put yourself in the room with with amazing and wild people yeah do it and put Very yourself true. out your comfort zone I did say when we were walking to the studio here today I was like when I started this podcast in 2020 I you were both probably 
I don't know, you were probably on Strictly and you were just about to come onto Love Island. Yeah. I don't think I had on my like plans that I would ever have you guys start on my sofa, but it's been really nice to chat to you. Honestly, like one of my favourite podcasts today, I've laughed so much, yeah. but we've no, also no, learned no, something thank you so as well. Much, so, yeah, I've followed yeah. your journey yeah. for so many years now and oh, actually thank you. Yeah, mess- messaging you and being like, okay, we would love to come on and yeah. talk about it and, and it feels like the right time. Like I've, yeah. we, We've absolutely loved it and, yeah. and congratulations yeah, on thanks, the guys. festival yeah. and everything. Yeah. We're yeah. excited for this year and hopefully we're free and we'd love yeah. to come to that as well. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much.